Now we get to these types where we do have to factor, right? Now again, we are just focused though on the denominator. So I'm going to look at this 2x squared minus 14x plus 20. And I noticed this, not that you really have to, but I can see right away that I can factor out a 2 from all three of the terms just because all three of them are even. So again, this is something that can equal 0. If I factor out a 2 from this, then what's left over? I got an x squared minus 7x plus 10, and this can equal 0. All right, now I would be looking just inside the parentheses, because even if I were to be solving this like an equation, either I would distribute the 2. In some cases, I may divide both sides by 2, which eliminates the 2. Because 0 divided by 2 is still 0. But we don't really have to think of it like that. So just anything on the inside of the parentheses, any values of x that would make that 0 is going to give us a true statement there. Okay, Or that's what x can be, I should say. So let's look at 10. Let's split it up. And we want two factors of 10 that when we add them together would give us negative 7, right? So... 2 and 5 seems to work, but if we make both of these negative and add them, we still get that negative 7 value, which is the coefficient of x. Now, just for time's sake, the nice thing about that is that we can split this up, right? Because there's no coefficient of the x squared here. Or just a 1, I should say. The coefficient of x squared is just 1. So we can just split this up. We can make that x minus 2 and x minus 5 right there. If we were to distribute those back together, then we would find we'd get that x squared minus 7x plus 10. And all this cannot equal 0. So we know when we multiply anything by 0 that, uh, well, we get 0. And since that's what this cannot be, we can look at the two parentheses, x minus 2, if this ever equals 0, then it would give us a false statement right there, right? I guess a true statement. It tells us what x cannot be. So x minus 2 just cannot equal 0. Otherwise, our denominator in the original expression up here will be 0, which is what we don't want, okay? So in order to solve this, I would just add 2 to both sides. And I see that x cannot equal and that's one of one part of the domain now on the other hand we have this other multiple x minus 5 if that ever equals 0 then it would also give us an undefined value for the function because the denominator would be 0 so on this one I'm just going to go ahead and add 5 to both sides and that tells us that x cannot be 5. So that's the second part of the domain. Uh, now since we're thorough, or that we should be, we really should check this and just make sure that if x is 2 and if x is 5, in the original denominator, that it would give us 0. Which again, is what we don't want. So this is the expression, but I'm going to replace all my x's with 2. And just see if it gives me 0, right? If it gives me 0, then I know that I have a value of x that is not part of the domain. So by the order of operations, I would have 2 squared right here, which is 4, minus 14 times 2. Some of you know you can multiply that 14 and 2 right now. But I'm just strictly staying with the order of operations. Then I do multiplication and division from left to right. So 2 times 4 is 8. 14 times 2 is 28. And, uh, well, the 20 just remains 20. And this is minus and plus. So from here, we've got 8 minus 28, which would be negative 20. And then plus this other 20. When we combine these, we get 0. So this x value is good, 
not good, however you want to think about it. All right, now I'm going to check that when x is 5, that it would give us that denominator, which is 0. So again, I'm going to replace all my x's with 5 and just check and see what we get. Uh, 5 squared is 25. So that is the exponent part of the order of operations. And then we have multiplication. 2 times 25 is 50. 14 times 5 is uh, 70. And then we still have that minus and then the plus 20. And as it turns out, I'm going to skip a couple steps here, but when we combine all of these, we do get 0. So now we're ready for the answer, which is that x such that x is any real number and x does not equal 2 or 5. And that would be the domain.